until today visited 49 states. So this is officially my 50th state. I love you back. We also have a lot of folks from Fort Richardson. United States Marine, Active, Guard, and Reserve. We have our allies and friends from the Canadian Armed Forces. I see, I see many spouses here today. And I want you to know you are the backbone of our military families and we honor your service. Kids who are here today. Hey guys! Yeah. I know you're proud of your mom and dad, but we're all proud of you too. You now we're here in America's last frontier. And most of you are far from home. And I know your service is made a little easier by your unbelievable neighbors. So we want to thank your local and state leaders, uh, Lieutenant Governor Craig Campbell. All the people of Anchorage and Alaska for their incredible support. And we're also joined today by a leader who is fighting for Alaska and Washington and for you and all our men and women in uniform as members of the Armed Services Committee and Veterans Affairs Committee. Mark Begich is here. My first visit there as president. The crews are out there refueling Air Force One. But I didn't want to just pass through. Because this is also, as I said, my first visit to Alaska and my first visit to Elmendorf. And I couldn't come here without taking this opportunity to deliver a simple message. A message of thanks to you and your families. Now, these have been days of tribute. Two days ago, we gathered at Fort Hood and we honored 13 Americans taken from us. Soldiers and caregivers, mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, sons and daughters, brothers and sisters. We grieved with families who've endured unimaginable loss. And we found inspiration in the wounded, their spirits unbowed, and in those who braved the bullets so that others might live. <clears throat> Yesterday, we gathered at Arlington National Cemetery to salute proud veterans who served on foreign fields long ago and wounded warriors from today. And as citizens of a grateful nation, we are humbled by such service. Today, we gather here at Elmendorf, and we see the same spirit. It's the same spirit that I saw in the outstanding airmen and soldiers I met with a few moments ago. It's the, it's the spirit that I see in all of you. It's your sense of service answering your country's call, volunteering in a time of war, knowing that you could be sent into harm's way. That's a sense of responsibility on your part. The belief that the blessings we cherish as Americans are not gifts that we take for granted, they are freedoms that are earned. And it's your sense of unity coming from every corner of the country, from every color and every creed and every faith and every station, to take care of each other and to serve together and to succeed together as Americans. So I'm here to say, so I'm here to say to all of you, all of you who serve, all the families who are here, of all the privileges I have as president, I have no greater honor than serving as your Commander-in-Chief. And we have the finest... We have the finest fighting force the world has ever known, and it's because of you. Because we've got the finest personnel in the world. That's our most precious resource. And by being here, all of you are joining a long line of service at Elmendorf from the liberation of Pacific Islands during World War II through a long Cold War. 
You embody that creed, faithful to a proud heritage, a tradition of honor, and a legacy of valor. You uphold that legacy every day. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you keep America's skies safe. So we salute the third wing and the 11th Air Force. You project power across the Pacific. Returning just recently from Guam, the 90th Fighter Squadron, the Dicemen. The 525th Fighter Squadron, the Bulldogs. And all the maintenance troops who support them welcome home. And when disaster strikes, whether a typhoon in the Philippines or an earthquake in Samoa, you're there, delivering the relief that save, saves lives. So thank you, Firebirds. Today we also send our thoughts and prayers to all those who at this very moment are serving on the front lines. They are, they are airmen from Elmendorf in every corner of the world. They're soldiers from Fort Richardson, military police in Iraq, the 4th Brigade Combat Team in Afghanistan, Fort Rich paratroopers are no strangers to tough assignments. A few years back, we all spent 14 months in Iraq. Now, they're working to bring stability and security to eastern Afghanistan, building roads and medical clinics, renovating schools, protecting the Afghan people, giving them a chance at a better future. They are doing a terrific job, and we salute them. But with services come sacrifice. All of you know this. You've made the most profound commitment a person can make. You've pledged to dedicate your life to your country, and perhaps give your life for it. Here at Elmendorf and Fort Richardson, some hand. They're airmen, like Staff Sergeant Timothy Bowles, who, when a comrade fell sick, volunteered to take his place on a patrol in Afghanistan that would end up taking his life. There's soldiers from the 4th Brigade Combat Team, like the husband and father who gave his life in Afghanistan last week, Specialist Julian Beresford, and citizens of this state, like Alaska Native Corporal Gregory Fleury. Raised in Anchorage, he joined the Marines and served two tours in Iraq. He loved the Corps, he loved Alaska, so much so that he carried the state flag with him everywhere. He was with him last month when he was killed in those helicopter crashes uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, a little while ago, I had the honor of meeting Greg's family, uh, Donna and Christopher, uh, and his grandfather, Albert. And I express the gratitude of our nation, and we thank them for being with us here today. Donna. to match the, grant and the magnitude of such service. But to you and all who serve, I say this. The American people thank you. We honor you. And just as you have fulfilled your responsibilities to your nation, your nation will fulfill its responsibilities to you. So as your Commander-in-Chief, here's the commitment I make to you. We'll make sure you can meet the missions we ask of you. And that's why we're increasing the defense budget, including spending on the Air Force and the Army. We'll make sure, we'll make sure we have the right force structure, so we've halted reductions in the Air Force, increased the size of the Army ahead of schedule, and also improved a temporary increase in the Army. We'll spend our defense dollars wisely, so we're cutting tens of billions of dollars in waste and projects that even the Pentagon says it doesn't need, Money that's better spent on taking care of you and your families and building the 21st century military that we do need. I want you guys to understand I will never hesitate to use force to protect the American people or our vital interests. But I also, 
I also make you this promise. I will not risk your lives unless it is necessary to America's vital interests. And if it is necessary, the United States of America will have your back. We'll give you the strategy and the clear mission you deserve. We'll give you the equipment and support that you need to get the job done. And that includes public support back home. That is a promise that I make to you. Yeah.